Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be answering some of your art business questions. So over on my Facebook group I asked you to throw your business questions at me and I was going to answer them in a YouTube video. So this is that video so if you are interested in starting your own art business then this is the video for you and let's get straight into it. So our first question is from Kylie and she asks, when selling artworks, how do you figure out a reasonable price to sell a drawing? They take hours and days to do, but people seem to expect art to be cheap. There are several ways that you can actually do this. The easiest way I find is to work out an hourly rate for yourself and to then work out how many or keep a track of how many hours a piece takes and then times those hours by your hourly rate. So for example, if you decide that your hourly rate is £10 and a piece takes you 10 hours, then 10 times 10 is 100. So your base price is going to be £100 for that piece of work. And then you need to add on any costs for for materials and anything that you've used and then you have a reasonable price for your artwork but obviously if something takes you 40 plus hours and you've got a hourly rate of 10 pounds it's going to be roughly 400 pounds if you times 40 by 10 and for some that can seem a little daunting but it's still not a huge price for an original artwork so that's a really good way to do it and you can set your um, hourly rate you can go up as you become more experienced so you can start with something like um, a national living wage hourly rate not sure what that is nowadays but it must be around 10 pounds and then as you get more experience behind your belt then you can go up to 15 20 and then increase your prices that way another way to do it is to work via linear inch and work out a set price per inch square for your piece that's another way to do it and that often works out roughly around the same as the hourly rate price as well but there are several ways you can do that and i think i have actually covered it in a previous video so if i can find that i'll link it below for you one thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to sell yourself too cheap and you don't want to put your prices up to like extortionate rates especially if you are a very like if you're just in the beginning stages of your art business so don't price too cheap the best way to go is the hourly rate and don't price extortionate and like above your skill level our next question is from Jules Taylor Art and they ask hi Amy what would you say your number one piece of advice to anyone wanting to set up a business selling their art so my number one tip or number one piece of advice especially in this day and age is to get yourself on social media social media is the best way to promote yourself i know a lot of artists think that posting your artwork online and everything isn't the best way to do it they want to be like in galleries that is a good way to go but if you want to increase your art business and reach a whole load of new customers then getting yourself on social media and being present on those social media pages is absolutely key so i would advise picking two or three key social media sites that you're going to post to regularly and to keep your your followers updated so whether that's Instagram Facebook Twitter YouTube TikTok any of those choose two between two and three and post regularly post updates and interact with your customers on social media reply to messages do all of that kind of thing and interact with other businesses and other pages on the social media platforms as well because that can boost your visibility to potential customers our next question is from Melanie and she asks how do you not get discouraged or disheartened at the beginning what first steps would you recommend so at the very beginning it is incredibly difficult to not get disheartened because I think a lot of us go into art business and or a business selling anything and think that we're immediately going to get sales and that is it really not the case it takes a lot of hard work and effort and communicating with your customers and finding your ideal audience in order to start to build reliable sales from that audience so when you first go into it don't set your expectations too high with that you're going to sell like 10 pieces of original art original art is actually incredibly difficult to sell it took me forever to sell my first original piece so don't expect too much at the very beginning. The best thing to do, as I mentioned in the last question, is to build your social media presence 
Find out what your ideal customer is by doing some research, by interacting with people and doing that kind of stuff. Those are the best first steps that you can take because if you're interacting with your audience and your potential customers, you are building that know, like and trust factor. So it's proven that people that know you and like you and like the interaction that you give are more likely to buy from you. So you want to spend that time really interacting with your audience, really building up a good, strong relationship. That is a crucial first step. Another first step to begin your art business is also to just have a look into the admin and the sort of back end side of things. That is a really crucial step, like look into kind of tax things, make sure that you are clued up on all of that as well, because that can overwhelm you when it comes to those times in a business year that you need to like file your tax return and everything so that's a good first step as well but in relation to discouragement or disheartening don't set your expectations too high so expect that you're going to have a few faulted steps don't think that everything's going to be smooth sailing because it does take a lot of hard work and it does take a lot of time as well our next question is from emma and she asked when you first started what did you do to promote your work so this is a really good one to answer because I think this is a really good kind of thing to learn from because I feel what I did here was a good way to build my commission business. So what I did, I had my Facebook page, it was going really well and I wanted to start to take on a lot more portraits. So what I actually did was held a competition called um, Next Top Pet Models. It's kind of like America's Next Top Model but for pets. And basically I put a post out and I asked people to submit their images and and then the one that I found cutest, or the few that I found cutest, I was going to draw and gift a free portrait. I also asked people to share this post with their friends and family on Facebook and it actually garnered like a lot of interest. I'm not sure now how many responses I got, but I got a lot and I basically picked the best one that I liked and that I wanted to draw. <laughs> not the best way to do it, but that's what I did at the time. And then I drew it and then I had people asking how much I would charge to draw theirs and I used a discounted rate for those people that had entered the next top pet model competition. And basically what I did was just drew some good pet portraits, I built up my portfolio, I posted them on social media and then after a couple months I had people contacting me and asking me what I charged and if I would be willing to draw their pet for them. So holding a free competition to build your portfolio, to build up your skills is a really good way to go about it. I know a lot of people are a little bit kind of wary of working for free but if you're at the very early stages of your business it's not going to matter too much whether or not you offer anything for free building that portfolio and again building that no like and trust factor with your customers is absolutely key and holding competitions and giveaways and things like that is a good way to do that so tally asks about pricing accordingly which we have already answered but she also asks about dealing with rude customers this is actually a really easy one to answer and if you are building your art business especially if it's commissioned based you are going to experience uh, one or two rude customers and the best way to deal with those customers it might feel like you want to like just be nasty to them or ignore them don't do that the best thing that you can do is to actually treat them better than your good customers so if they're being really rude and horrible to you and giving you a hard time treat them even better than you would an existing customer so often having that little extra interaction helps a rude customer become a nice customer and often a repeat customer as well so don't treat them with disdain or like push them away or anything like that obviously if it's going like too far and a little bit too harsh then you can actually fire your customer but more often than not the best thing to do when dealing with those people is to just treat them even better than your other customers and yeah that's what's worked for me. Our next question is from Erin and she asks what's the best way to pick web hosting and domain buying for your art business? I'm totally stuck. 
So the best thing to do is to decide what kind of website you're going with. So are you going to build your own website using WordPress or something, or are you going to go for something that's like an all in one package and is like a website builder like Wix or Squarespace? Because if you're going for something like Wix uh, or Squarespace, they have web hosting integrated with their like package that they offer you. So you're kind of sorted, you don't have to worry about choosing the right host for you. But if you want to build your own website, which gives you a little bit more flexibility and a few more options, then the best thing to do is to just shop around online, Google it, just what web domain hosts and find the best deal that suits you for your needs. And also another good tip is just to Google anything that the web host offers. Like if you're not sure what term means, Google it. I wasn't sure when I first set up like what exactly a dedicated server offered for a web host, I uh, just googled it and found the answers that way. So the best thing to do is just compare a few web hosts and see what deals you can get and what they offer. And as for domain buying, the best place to go is something like 123 Reg or 1on1. One one. You can register your domain with those. And also when picking your domain, make sure that it matches up as close as possible to your art business name. So one good tip when starting your business is to Google whether or not your art business name is taken in terms of domain. That's a really good thing to do because you don't want to end up with a domain that's like nothing related to your art business. You wanna try and find a domain that is like your business name. If you can't find a domain that is your business name, try and choose one that is the closest. So Jane asks, hi, I would like to have artwork printed onto greetings cards, but don't know where to start. My first try at having artwork printed by a local company wasn't very good. I think I chose the wrong paper, many thanks. So I actually use an online printer for all of my cards and all of the like inserts and everything that I put into all of my orders. And the company that I use is printed.com. I will leave a link to those in the description below if you wanna check them out, they are absolutely great I highly recommend um so with a company like that they often provide you templates that you can just kind of drag and drop your artwork onto printed.com do offer templates for all of their print options that they offer so that's really good so you don't have to worry about getting the measurements right you can just download the template import it into your photo manipulation software and then add your print for you you do have to do the design and everything yourself they don't do that for you which is a bit of a downside i'm not sure if they do actually offer a design um, service or you can have a look on the website for that um, but using a local company for things like prints is a really good idea because my experience with getting prints printed via an online company where you can't control the color matching or they don't scan the artwork for you it is often difficult to get the exact color match so if you're wanting to go for something like fine art prints or producing limited edition prints or anything like that the best thing to do is to find a local printer where you can take it to be take your artwork to be scanned and that you can oversee the color matching process and everything like that there is actually a printer online that does actually do this his name is richard loversley i'm not sure if i'm saying his name right but i'll leave his link in the description below as well um, you can ship your artworks to him he scans and then color matches and sends your stuff back to you and i think the good thing about him is that he does limited runs like um small print runs as well so you don't have to buy a large quantity which is great um, but if you can't find a local company then doing a google search to find an online company is good but just bear in mind that if you want to do fine art prints that using something online you're not going to get a 100 percent match it's gonna be a little bit different <laughs> also when choosing the paper that is crucial as well that's why going to somewhere local and kind of seeing their paper qualities and their print qualities in the flesh is often a good idea because uh, the papers print differently depending on what you choose. So a glossy paper is going to print differently to uh, a non-coated paper. Also with online companies, you can actually request a paper sample pack. And that's a good thing to do. I don't know if every company charges a small fee or whether they send it to you for free. That depends on the company that you're looking at. Um, but often you can order a paper, paper sample pack. They send you a little print brochure with some paper samples so you can see uh, the texture of the paper, how the colours differ between each individual different paper as well. 
Eden has a really interesting question. She asks, what are your top mistakes that you made so we can learn from them? This is something that I'm going to cover in a whole different video. I want to go through like things that you should and shouldn't do. Um, but just one off the top of my head here is one mistake I made was not having a proper business plan and just kind of winging it. I thought that, you know, business was going to be easy. You don't need a plan. You can just do whatever you want at any time and everything will work out. And that does not work at all. You need a good structured business plan. You need a goal in mind as to where you're going and what you want to do and when you're going to do it. Um, also, a mistake I made at the first was not planning and this is something that I still struggle with now because I find it difficult to keep on top of planning and keep on top of everything but planning, using a journal, just tracking your progress and everything is something that you should be doing as well. So we had a couple questions asking about promotion and sales. Sky asked about ways to promote and doing sales and Denise asked RE sales other than selling at exhibitions I really have no idea where to begin. Help if possible thank you. You really need to watch the previous YouTube video that I created about 10 ways to make money as an artist. I'll link that in the description below and as a card up above for you. Just gives you a few kind of base ideas as to how to generate sales and income for your art business, which is a really good thing. But ways to promote other than social media. And a key thing that you need to do is to get yourself a mailing list. So whoever you choose to host your email list, mine is personally with MailChimp and I have two separate mailing lists with those. I have one for tutorials and one for my shop and I try to make sure that I send out a um, newsletter at least every two months but I'm really stepping up my newsletter game now. That's a really good way to promote. Um, you can promote your newsletter link on your social media sites, videos if you make them, post it absolutely everywhere. If you have a shop with Etsy you can post a link to that in your item descriptions, in your shop announcement and everything like that and then you can get people onto your mailing list and then you can promote anything you want to them through that mailing list. Other ways to promote are obviously by doing sales or collaborating with other pages that are similar to you, um, offering like a group uh, giveaway or something like that. It's a really good idea of how to promote yourself and how to get pe your products and whatever you're selling in front of people as well. The next question comes from Domi and they ask how to find your target audience. This is a really difficult one because everybody's target audience is different so my target audience is completely different to what yours may be. But the best way to do this is to look at the people that are interacting with your page um, that are leaving you reviews on your shop or buying your products. So sometimes the best thing to do especially if you have a Facebook page or you have Instagram look at the people that are liking your work and just check out their profile see what they're into and if you can see if they follow anything else that is similar to you just looking at the people that kind of follow your pages and interact with your posts is a good way to kind of get a small idea of what your target audience is but more often than not the more you post your target audience will flock to you you might also find that you might have someone in mind that you think is your target audience but when you're posting it's someone completely different so when you do kind of find a correlation between the people that are interacting and liking your posts and pages then you kind of want to alter the wording or the way that you kind of put your posts across to kind of suit that target audience and that's going to attract more of those people and they're just going to flock to you so our final question is from Elise. She's got quite a long question here with several parts. So her first part is that she's learning the admin side. So any advice here would be great. I'm learning record keeping practices and bookkeeping. Do you do these manually or digitally? So I'm actually fortunate because in my previous work, I was actually bookkeeping and accounting. So I've actually done a course on bookkeeping so I'm a qualified bookkeeper so this is really easy for me and I do mine both manually and digitally I just have an excel spreadsheet I put all of my income and outgoings down in two separate columns and then take them away from each other and then sort the expenses and everything out into um, different columns so I can see just how much I've um, put, how much I've spent on postage or something like that um, but this is a good thing 
to get yourself into. So often people think that an art business is just art. You're just going to be doing the fun stuff all the time. You do need to do the bookkeeping and the admin side as well. It is more important in my eyes doing that and having a background and having a little bit of experience in that. So when you're starting your art business, it is a really good idea that you're not only doing the fun art stuff, that you do actually do the bookkeeping and admin and actually kind of get a small understanding of how that works and how you can do it for yourself. Obviously, if you want to, you can hire yourself an accountant to do it for you, but I think it's a really good skill to have under your belt um, you, to do your own books and just to see exactly how much you're spending and what you're spending it on and what your income is. It's a good idea to really understand and know that yourself. Uh, the next part of her question says, do you advertise beyond your Facebook and YouTube? Have you ever paid to be shown on popular art page or magazine? What are your thoughts slash feelings on these types of advertising? So outside of Facebook and YouTube, as I mentioned, I have my newsletter um, and I have Instagram and other social media sites, which I obviously promote across. Um, but I haven't actually paid to be featured on any particular Instagram or art page or anything like that. But the only time that I've ever like paid to be featured was actually by a magazine that contacted me and I was kind of actually tricked into advertising with them. So what actually happened was they got hold of my contact details. They gave me a ring and um, told me exactly like what they were going to do. They're going to do this page spread, um, write this article, feature my artworks and I was like yes this is great this sounds fantastic and they asked me whether I wanted to do it and I was like of course why wouldn't I want to do this they started telling me everything and then they were like right it's going to be this much and I was like you yeah, what you never mentioned that it was going to be paid at any point um and basically because I'd already agreed and said yes verbally like this was some kind of verbal contract I was really duped into this they said that I had agreed and that I had to pay the sum otherwise they were going to get in contact with their solicitors and yeah take things further and I was like oh crap <laughs> um but yeah I had agreed apparently to do this magazine feature had no idea that it was paid when they first started talking to me they were just like we can do this we can do this it's going to be great and then they were like money please and I was like mm. so that's the only thing that I've ever paid for and I got absolutely nothing from the magazine like nobody contacted me don't even know if it was a real magazine or anything like that but yeah basically I was tricked into paying for a magazine feature and I got absolutely nothing from it the only things that I have ever got things from was when I did a tutorial and had work featured in Anne Kohlberg's colour magazine and the coloured pencil magazine I didn't pay to be featured in those but I wasn't at either paid to be featured either so they didn't pay me and I didn't pay them it was kind of a mutual a payoff thing so they got a free tutorial or whatever from me and then I in return got the exposure and I know a lot of people go on like oh you shouldn't do things for free or for the exposure but I really trust and love and know both of those magazines so I I thought it was a fair trade-off and I actually got a lot of students and a lot of custom from it so I was happy and the Colour Pencil and and Colbog's magazine was happy because they got something to feature in their magazine. Of course there are exceptions when you can do like paid features and things like that but in my experience they don't they don't pay off so it's best to just do something for free or to have the magazine pay you if they really want you or to just promote through yourself and the last part of her comment was love you and your art thank you so much <laughs> i love your studio vlogs during the daily grind it helps me realize full-time artists are real jobs too absolutely i have the hardest time in my life with trusting that to be true it is entirely impossible for you to become a full-time artist as I said at the very beginning it just takes a lot of time and it does take a lot of effort and hard work and it can be disheartening as we had from somebody asking can be disheartening at the very beginning but once you get established and once you get the ball rolling it is a really good business to have it is increasingly easier to become a full-time artist if you have the hard work and determination and you're willing to put 
the effort in and you're patient with it, you can have a really thriving art business. It isn't impossible. It isn't the whole starving artist thing nowadays. You can have a full time living with your art. So that is pretty much it for the questions on art business. If you have any more questions that you'd like me to answer or if you have any ideas or suggestions for future videos pertaining to art business specifically, then feel free to pop me a comment down below because I want to bring you more in this series and I intend to inform and help you guys when building your art businesses as well because it's something that I'm really passionate about and I want to help you guys as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't noticed, we have hit 20,000 subscribers and I'm so, so happy. Thank you so much, each and every one of you beautiful beans. Let's get the ball rolling for 25k and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.